Facebook Friday. That's why we snuck in like a minute early because there's early. lots of news today. I know it really is. So uh, we're gonna quick sound check here. Ben's gonna yeah. Polly's gonna share you know. everything. And uh, but uh, in case you're living under a rock somewhere, this weekend is D23, the uh, Disney Fan Expo that comes around every two years, and they are releasing a lot of information. Uh, a lot of what we have right now, we've got some stuff about rides and the future of Disney parks, Star Wars land. Uh, and they're doing the hotel stuff tomorrow, apparently. So you're going to get a double dose of the uh, of the Magic Shores this week because we're going to come to you live tomorrow at about we're nine o'clock nine our time. Yeah, yeah, nine our time. That gives the news time to filter in and everything. We can chat about it and get all excited and see. And then we'll talk yeah. about it. Um, but Even though uh, we aren't there to actually report it. <laughs> yeah, we hope everyone had a good week um, and everyone's staying dry because it is kind of uh, damp out occasionally. But uh, how are we how are we sounding, dear? We are good. All right. Everything is shared. All righty. Life is beautiful. Oh, uh, you know what? I should share it to the. Well, apparently, we're not done sharing page. yet. Hang on, let me share it to the main travel page too, yep. just in case so, people are there. Uh, we're we like sharing. We like sharing. Sharing um, is caring. But uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just jump the gun a little bit and tell you about, well, not about because I didn't have a chance to look at it. But yeah, so okay. they re at D23, they have a model of the future Star Wars land expansion to Disneyland and Disney World Parks. Uh, and it looks amazing. Uh, looks like there's a scale size Millennium Falcon, which I believe will be access to the Millennium Falcon ride where you get to pilot the Millennium Falcon, but not as well as Han Solo. And then, uh, there's also supposed to be a, Solo. there's all, well, anyone can fly better than Harrison Ford these days. I'm just kidding. Oh. Mr. Ford, if you're watching, I love you. I'm oh sorry. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, what's that? I was, I was listening to an interview, uh, interview with Mark Hamill where he said the, the five scariest words, uh, that you could never hear Harrison say was, Hey, want to go for a ride or something like that? Um, <laughs> I'll fly. <laughs> but anyway, and there's also supposed to be a first order ride, which they released a picture of the ride vehicle for that, and it looks pretty cool. So I am really excited. I have already sent up the nerd signal to my friends, and we're going to go in 2020 uh, to see Star Wars land. It's like a pilgrimage for us. It's like how like non-nerds go to Vegas. Like That's, how, that's what we're going to do with this. So um, You can tell Ben is really excited because I can't get a word in edgewise. And yeah, that never happens. Yes, so. well... <laughs> Mostly, I was just giving giving you cover so that uh, you could uh, do have our technical Thank difficulties you. podcast. But I am really excited about Star Wars Land. It is like my favorite thing ever, and I love it so much. Um, yeah. Um, also, in Star Wars related news at D23, Mark Hamill was officially inducted as a Disney legend today. Yes. Uh, along with Stan Lee, Whoopi Goldberg, posthumously Carrie Fisher, and um, other people. Yeah, I, I have no idea who else I, <laughs> I didn't I did pay attention remember. to the rest of the list. I didn't care. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Mark Hamill, there's going to be handprints on there. If you ever get a chance to go, I, I suggest you do it. It's really cool. Yeah, the that's from the Disney Legends Plaza at the uh, Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, um, where if you do the Adventures by Disney Southern California trip, you can actually go to the Legends Plaza, and you can put your handprints in the handprints of Legends. Indeed. <laughs> it, was, really, it, was it was really fun. very, very neat. Yeah, more... Uh, more um, fulfilling than I would have expected. I know, right? Honestly, like, I, like, I had it, a really lot took, of fun in that place. It took me a while to hunt down John Williams. I think he is, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, it was like right before we left, so I didn't have a chance to do anything weird with it, which yeah. is probably for the best because, yeah. Uh, hello to Jessica, Susan, and Donna. Hi guys. Welcome aboard. All right. What else we got think, news? Wait, is that Susan Roberts? Yes. Oh my gosh. Our live feed has reached the United Kingdom. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's Amy's mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, hi guys. <laughs> and, um, so news, uh, obviously Ben just talked about D23, Bye. Star Wars, <laughs> there's also uh, some other fun stuff coming out of D23, not a ton yet because they're, you know, California's three hours behind us, so it's only five o'clock there, they're just wrapping sessions for the day, so tomorrow night when we do an update we'll have a little bit more, uh, hopefully, to share with you. Um, but one thing I thought was just hysterical, <laughs> they have a Scrooge McDuck's money bin at D23, <laughs> and this morning there was a 90 minute wait to jump in it. <laughs> That's so, that's pretty awesome. If actually. anything, ha like watching anything today, convinced me to go to D twenty three when it's held again in two thousand nineteen. It's screwed McDuck's money oh, bin. Is that a thing that we're doing now? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. I All mean, right. we're gonna go to Alani in twenty nineteen, right? That's on. The, that's the that's plan. On the schedule, and I mean, Disneyland's kind of on the way. So, but that means we means we have to go in the summer, which. Yeah, where are you probably gonna not. We're probably not going to go to D twenty three in nineteen. <laughs> honestly, I mean, just it's probably not going to happen. But another time, maybe. Um, 
So most of the other things are just speculation at this point. So just to give you a heads up for some of the things we're hoping to talk about tomorrow night. Hi, Melissa. Um, we uh, are assuming that we're going to get some kind of information about Toy Story Land's opening date. Mm. We don't know if we're going to get a confirmed date. We might get like a range spring, <laughs> summer, spring, fall. And you can, I mean, you can usually set your clock by if Disney tells you it's going to be spring. Um, that it'll be June 21st <laughs> roll out. So just <laughs> be prepared that it will be like the last day of whatever season they say it's going to be. So if Technically you're, correct. <laughs> if you're trying to plan a trip to Target, a land opening, um, you definitely are going to want to give it a couple of months. Don't, don't be planning your trip of a lifetime to coincide with a land opening and think that Disney is going to be correct about when they're going to open their lands. Uh, also, don't expect that all attractions will be open and 100% functional with no bugs <laughs> when they open the new land. So it's definitely a good idea to try to push that trip back a couple months from when that estimate is. So um, so hopefully we'll have a gauge if you're trying to hit uh, Toy Story Land opening, we'll have a gauge of when that's going to happen. Um, we're also kind of expecting we might hear something about um, Tomorrowland Speedway going away. There were a lot of rumors this week about Tron Light Cycle uh, coming to to uh, Walt Disney World. Um, speculation has been anything from they're going to take out the Speedway and replace it with Tron Light Cycle to they're going to put Tron Light Cycle behind the Speedway. I heard one today that um, or yesterday that Universe of Energy was going to close at Epcot and they were going to put it there. Um, I've heard people saying that it doesn't fit where Speed where Tomorrowland Speedway is and they'd have to take out the People Mover in order to make the Light Cycle happen. So. Hopefully we'll hear some kind of information about what the real st story is there and what's leaving um, to, to make way for it. Hi, Rob. You know, it's actually funny. I was at the gym the other day and Tron Legacy was on and they had oh, the really? light cleans <laughs> instead of the light cycle. And I was like, why are they doing that? Maybe they will. Well, maybe, maybe we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> um, the, um, uh, like I said, the Universe of Energy, we're expecting some sort of announcement potentially about what's going to happen with that. Oh, um, I will miss my naps on that ride. I'd, yeah, it is a good, it's a good 40 minute nap. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm so excited to see something else come in there. <laughs> I don't even care if they have to recycle the dinosaurs and use them in the attraction. Just yeah, something no, else. No, wrong with dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's funny. Whenever you talk about an attraction going away, there are always people who are like, but not Attraction X. It's my favorite. I have never, ever heard anybody say, no, please, not the Universe of Energy. No, please. They're not like, kill it. It's terrible. <laughs> Put it down. Put it out of its misery. <laughs> Well, it, it has the problem of being dated, exceptionally dated. Yeah, it is. It's very. Dated. I mean, and yeah. you know, not that Ellen's dated, but the the technology. I mean, Bill Nye is a little bit, to be a, honest. A little I mean, bit, like, but that's, that's. Well, he's got his new show, and uh, but um, like you know, like they had the big CRT TVs in there and stuff like that. I was just like, wow, and this I mean, definitely looks like it was made in yeah. the like. And Jeopardy's certainly not dated. I mean, that's true. You know, it's, we're on robot Alex Alex Trebek now, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, also new pavilions potentially coming to World Showcase. This has been rumored for a while. Uh, Brazil is probably the strongest rumor that we've heard. I think we actually talked about it a little bit last week. I think we did. Um, others that have been thrown out are Spain, Australia. Um, I heard Philippines today, uh, from someone I consider to be a fairly reliable source who was reporting from the convention. So, mm. uh, not actually reporting because that, there's nothing that has been announced yet, but, um, Fairly, fairly reliable intel that that's a possibility. Hmm. Um, we've also heard um, Thailand, and I've personally requested Greece or Russia, but I don't think they're on. The, I don't think they're actually on the uh, the block, so um, not uh, not this time. Uh, but there are, I think there are seven spaces left. Uh, well, I mean, if they Russia do days. Russia, they could complement the margarita bar with the vodka bar, so... It's true. They should put Russia right next to Mexico. <laughs> people pass out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been some speculation out this week too about uh, nighttime shows and parades. Um, Paint the Night heard a rumor the other day that that's going to move to California Adventure. I uh, also heard that the reason it's not moving to Magic Kingdom, it's not even possible to move it to Magic Kingdom because of the um, the route that the parade takes uh, with coming from Liberty Square and having to go three quarters of the way around the hub. The angles are too tight and they can't get the larger Paint the Night floats through. Wow. So. I hadn't heard that angle before, so I'm thinking that's, I mean, obviously that lends credence to, to Paint the Night not coming to Magic Kingdom, and also to why there might have been a rumor in the past that it was coming, and then they measured, and they were like, oh, oh. wait, hang on a minute, it's well, not going to work. That's like that that story, Um, it's it's some part of the space shuttle 
was the size of it was limited by a tunnel it had to go through. Like, oh, it had yeah. to travel over land, it had right. to go through the tunnel, so it had right. to fit, but yeah. <laughs> so your your entertainment options are limited by the curvature of the plaza in, at the hub. They are, apparently. So. <laughs> and you wouldn't think about it, because in, you'd think, well, D- Magic Kingdom's larger than Disneyland Park, so it shouldn't, like, size would never have occurred to me as being an issue, but the route that the parade takes in Disneyland Park, it goes up to the right of the castle, and their small world is, is um, farther to the back of the park, and that's where the parade floats park. So they have almost a straight shot from the small world entrance through the front of the park. Easy peasy to get those floats through. Never even occurred to me that, like, you've got to come from Frontierland and loop around through Liberty Square, get around that hub out Main Street, and then around the town square circle, and then through the car barn exit. I mean, it it really is pretty tight when you think about it, but I just wouldn't have thought about it before. So Um, I paint the night listed twice on my list. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> You're really excited, I'm huh? really excited. Well, there is an, a rumor I heard this week it may be going to California Adventure. Okay. Um, but once again, space being an issue, um, apparently they'd have to take down the cable car lines for the trolleys <laughs> to move it over there. So I think that's why Paint the Night is kind of sitting in limbo, because it's an awesome parade. They need to put it somewhere. Um, even if – because um, Main Street Electrical is ending at Disneyland on, I want to say, July 20th. Uh, which would coincide with Phantasmic coming back um, pretty closely, so that would make sense. Um, I don't s- understand why they don't just put it in, in Disneyland. Like, leave it there, because obviously it worked before. It's an awesome parade. It needs to be seen somewhere. Um, so I hope that they'll make a good decision about that. Maybe they'll send it to one of the international parks. I hope not. Or, like, maybe <laughs> resize the floats. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't know what they'll do, but, I mean, I'm kind of hoping to hear something about it. I don't know if it's as major of, um, you know, a, a fan favorite um, news item as some of the others, obviously, but I'm, I hope they'll at least make an announcement. Um, there's, there's been speculation about Illuminations going away. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Siemens is no longer partnered with Disney, and that was actually um, effective, like, immediately after we got the news that that partnership dissolved, so. So, how long do you think before Spaceship Earth turns into the Death Star? I'm just, I'm, I don't think it'll be done in time for 2019, but we might have it in time for 2020. You don't think so? I I really don't think they're gonna do it, because everything Star Wars is gonna be in Hollywood Studios. Except Star Tours. Oh, no, Star Tours is in Hollywood. Yeah, it's not in Disneyland. Oh, yeah, sorry. But it's in Tomorrowland, where it also kind of fits thematically. Um, I don't, think they'll bring any star wars to epcot i don't that's actually good yeah i don't think it will i don't think they will um i have no idea what they're going to do with epcot I'm, I'm hoping that tomorrow they give at least some vague notion of what's going to happen because they're talking like epcot overhaul and permits have been filed like left and right for things to happen at epcot and they're given no information yes melissa spaceship earth does is in desperate need of a renovation and an update on that little yeah. like like, maybe we could go past, like, 1975 in the um, scenes about c- the history of communication. Maybe. Since <laughs> we're uh, past uh, Steve Jobs in his garage. <laughs> that would be great. It was Steve Jobs or Bill Gates? I think it's Steve Jobs. Uh, or it might be Steve Wozniak. But it's one of the Steves, I'm pretty sure. Anybody know? Anybody know the answer to that? Internet, tell who's us. In, who's in the garage at um, the end of Spaceship Earth? We've always tuned out computer. by then. Yeah, um, I'm usually I'm usually still focused on why is this this chick still wearing go go boots? Like, what's the deal with this this costuming on this <laughs> on this animatronic? <laughs> what else we got? Um, great movie ride. Um, speculation is that um, we're getting some sort of Mickey Mouse themed attraction oh. inside the Great Movie Ride. Oh. So the Great Movie Ride, as we know and love it. M- Melissa agrees with you. It's Steve away. Jobs. Okay, it's a Steve. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. Because they talk about building a computer in the garage, and that's that's Jobs and Wozniak. I thought it was Gates, too, but I could be wrong. I'm probably um, wrong. So anyway, great movie ride. Changing, somehow. Don't know how yet. Um, something Mickey-themed. I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, especially if they're doing Toy Story Land and like yeah. kind of like making it a lot about the animation and right. stuff like that. I really hope that... One's man, one Man's Dream. You want One Man's Dream to get transferred over to a uh, movie ride. I don't think they're going to. I think they're gonna, it's going to be more movie-centric. <laughs> okay. Um, but it is supposed to be some sort of history of Disney animation on some level. So, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, the... Uh, <laughs> well, I lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> That happens. That happens a lot. We got great movie ride. Yeah, it was was a great movie ride related. Mickey. Ride. Mm. Fun. 
Yay. Okay. Okay, I don't what know. Else, what else you got for news? Come on. Um, Magic, hey, <laughs> relax. We don't have that much to say about Alani. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but you got dead air here. Um, nighttime parade. Um, something should be coming back to Magic Kingdom. We might hear something about that tomorrow. So those are the things that we're kind of hoping to hear. Maybe even a couple of surprise news items also. So tomorrow night, tune in um, around 9 o'clock. We will um, sit around and chat about it and join in with us. And we'd love to hear your opinions too. So. Nice little fireside chat. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, and other news, food and wine menus are out. Um, do we have a long... No, it's okay, it, we're good. It, it, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm just reading Melissa's comments. Okay. okay. Um, food and wine menus are out, and we have a couple of um, pavilions that are leaving this year. Um, Poland is leaving. What? Yeah, sorry. But my pierogies in kielbasa. Yeah, we'll have to get them somewhere else, because they're not going to be at Poland at food and wine. Mm -hmm. I know. But wait till you hear what's coming. Better be good. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough to top kielbasa and pierogies. South Korea is also leaving, which I was a little I'm actually like feeling a little bummed because I skipped the kimchi last time because I was like oh, I'll get it next time we're here. And <laughs> now of course South Korea always it's always when I skip they're like that's nobody why, liked it. We're that's why I never skipped the kielbasa. Yeah. <laughs> um, Greenhouse Guru I saw on one list Greenhouse Guru was leaving on another list I didn't see it as on the chopping block. So what was that Greenhouse Guru? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, don't sounds, <laughs> sounds vaguely vegetable related. Yeah. So uh, That sounds like it might be healthy. I couldn't see it over the pile Dump of it. small meat dishes. Yeah. Um, also, desserts and champagne is leaving. Really? Yeah, which I thought was weird because isn't that where the um, the uh, cronut was at? No, cronut's at the... Oh, um, was that the rum Dole Whip? Was that at desserts and champagne? No, uh, Dole Whip's at the refreshment port. Okay. Uh, not Dole, uh, yeah, they're both at the what refreshment port. Okay, the, the they cronut both are? And the and the Dole Whip or okay. the refreshment port. All right, I was thinking Listen, desserts it's like my two favorite point. things all in one place. Like, yeah. pretty sure it's there. Okay, good. Um, the new pavilions that are coming are Active Eats. Um, I read down the menu for that. Nothing there sounded particularly active, like it was going to get up on the plate and dance or anything. So I'm not really sure what the... Are they like... They did didn't they, did they, sound like... Did healthy. they buy Star Trek? Are they like doing the Klingon worm food goth oh, that's I better when it's fresh? No, probably not. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think so. You're not going to eat live snails there. Maybe okay. it's going to be all right. Um, yeah, so not really sure what that's all about yet. Hopefully we'll get some more details um, on that. Like I said, I just kind of glanced at these pretty quickly because D23 has kind of monopolized my day. <laughs> um, and uh, Cheese Studio, which I thought was a strange addition because wasn't there a Cheese Studio last year? I, I remember eating cheese. It was next to the chocolate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it was the Cheese Studio. Okay. I, I th it was like I wonder. It was if the, maybe like a wine thing, and they had cheese there. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. you're right. Okay. Well, anyway, the cheese was so popular at the wine thing, and they got its own booth. Well, yeah. It's about time. Because cheese is delicious. <laughs> right. There's a new one called Flavors from Fire. You know, grilled, barbecued, that sort of thing. Nice. Um, you remember the um, was it Sticky Piggy Wings last year? They were yes. in the beer pavilion. Yes, yes. Okay, well, they're in the Flavors from Fire. So that's going to solve the problem of the food people and the beer people fighting because um, everybody was, you know, all the food people thought the beer people were making the line long and all the beer people thought the food people were making the line long. And it was like, turns out we it were was both contentious. Wrong. It was very contentious. Yeah, there, there was actually a lot of hostility there. <laughs> yeah, like we ordered we ordered food. Cause Drunken real, hostility yeah, in some cases. Yeah, we're not beer drinkers, so we got some food and like the people were staring at us like, why are you in our line? <laughs> So I'm glad that the food's moving somewhere else. Um, there is Light Lab, which is uh, a drink stand, and this one caught my attention because they're uh, they have a drink that's called T equals CC. I think it's supposed to be squared, but I think it was a sub. Well, who cares? There's a new drink, um, and it's got vanilla. I didn't write it down. A vanilla something, some sort of alcoholic vanilla substance there we go and cotton candy <laughs> so i'm kind of excited about that like legit cotton candy or like no alcohol? i got a cotton candy flavor oh okay yeah, I was yeah, gonna yeah. Say like... no it's a vanilla cotton candy drink so I, i'm kind of excited mm -hmm. i think it sounds good um three new countries coming to food and wine and they are drum roll india Ooh. spain Ooh. and thailand oh nice yeah However, at Thailand, no sticky rice. I don't understand. What are you going to do? I don't know. Protest. I think I will. <laughs> um, we talked last week about pirates. Yeah. And about the um, We Once the Redhead scene. 
leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, the change has well, actually specifically the 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 auction the wench auction yeah, the wench was auction. leaving. Right. Uh, I think they were keeping the redhead because the while, redhead is still in the while yes. they could tolerate some disapproval. Getting rid of the redhead would have par- apparently meant flipping the ride over and setting it on fire because a lot of people like that redheaded uh, pirate lady, and I think she is going to be a pirate now. Was the deal? That's that's what I heard. Um, I watched. Um, a ride-through video because this change has already been made at Disneyland Paris like they announced it and like two days later BAM change so of course it was in the works for a while and they were just like oh crap we better we better tell people about this before we debut it and they lose their minds <laughs> <laughs> so, and the internet uh, predictably lost, lost its, its mind. mind yeah um, so uh, I don't speak French at least not anywhere close to fluently enough to understand what they were saying plus the poor quality of a cell phone video in an attraction that's kind of in noisy dark inside. Ride. In a dark ride with water. So you got a lot of shh, you know, in the background. Um, so... What was that? <laughs> <laughs> but based on what the what other people were saying the translation is, um, the, the We Wants the Redhead is still loosely in there somewhere, but... You know, French to English. I don't know if they actually changed the line or if it's just a translation thing. That um, it sounds like it's maybe like we want what the redhead is selling. It's or... not real till it comes to America, to America yeah. anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> international guests and viewers, I yeah, apologize. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> uh, it sounds like the the language of the scene is going to be roughly preserved. It maybe just tweaked a little bit. Um, the, the former wenches were definitely covered up. They don't look like pirates. They really kind of just looked like townspeople. But once again, it was kind of hard to see because it's very, the video is very dark. So, um, it looks like it's not like crash and burn. Like everything's coming to an end. It it doesn't look terrible. It's just, they've definitely started to change it. So I don't know how long it'll take for land and world to have the changes. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was a timeline put forth on that. Uh, and then last news item. I think. A lot of news today. That's a lot of news, I'm telling you. It's crazy. Um, Disneyland packages will be released on Tuesday for 2018. Um, Expect them to be a lot like Disney World. You probably will not be able to book your December 2018 trip on Tuesday, but you should be able to book at least midway through the year. Um, Also, MaxPass is debuting at Disneyland on Monday in conjunction with Disneyland Railroad reopening, Fantasmic starting again, the Sailing Ship Columbia, and the Liberty Bell River Boat all starting to run again. So, pretty exciting week at Disneyland this week. Missed it by that much. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I'm, I am really glad that the, the train's going to yeah. be running because I'm, when I take Dad in January, I think it would be he'll really enjoy being able to ride the Disneyland Railroad. So, um, I, I'm glad <laughs> he didn't have to see it shut down. Um, anyway, what was I going to say about that? I don't know. Uh, were you going to tell people how to contact you if they want to book Disneyland packages? Oh, yeah. You would do that at holly at themagicsears.com. Um no, there was something else I wanted okay. to say. Oh, MaxPass. I wanted to explain Oh, yeah, MaxPass, Max yes. So, MaxPass is FastPass plus PhotoPass. So, say that three times fast. <laughs> um, Disneyland still does not have magic bands. And, in fact, what you've actually been doing for the last, I don't know, however long FastPass has existed, at, you would go up to the physical FastPass machines like you used to do at World, put in your admission ticket, and it would spit back out two FastPass tickets. You had, well, however many tickets you put in. Um... You'd have to hold those fast pass tickets and present the paper ticket when you got to the attraction. Okay, for those of you who forget how fast pass works back in the day. Hi, Howard. <laughs> um, Max Pass uh, is going to be a switch for everybody, regardless of what fast pass system you're using, because it's going to be different based on what you pay for. Um, if you're using Disneyland's regular fast pass system now, you're going to insert your admission ticket. Your ticket is going to collect the information about your fast pass, and then you'll present your admission ticket when you get to the ride. Hmm. So there will no longer be the, the the paper fast pass cards. It will be tied to your ticket. You just won't have um, you won't have a magic band to do it. Hmm. So that's um, that's coming. And if you purchase um, Max Pass, that's still plain Fast Pass. That's just a change in Fast Pass procedural operations. If you purchase Max Pass. Then you're going to be able to use the app to schedule your fast passes. It's going to have the same rules as all other fast passes do. So you can go on the app and you can pick, like, let's say I get Space Mountain for 9:15. Then I can go on and schedule Matterhorn at 9:15. I can go on and pick up a fast pass for Matterhorn. 
whether I've used my Space Mountain yet or not. Then let's say my Matterhorn is at 1030. At 1030, I can go on and schedule my Fast Pass for, uh, what's another Fast Pass ride at Disneyland? Haunted Mansion. Okay. So you can still only hold Fast Passes according to the same rules you could before. Your fast pa your, either your initial Fast Pass has to have opened up or you have to wait two hours. So if you get a World of Color Fast Pass as your first thing in the morning choice, uh, and I think that World of Color is going to be tied to that. That's a bad example. Let's use Radiator Springs Racers. If you get a Radiator Springs Racers Fast Pass at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's probably going to be for 4 in the afternoon. So you don't have to wait till 4 to schedule your Fast Pass. You can go in at 11 and get another one as long as you wait that two hours. Gotcha. Um, when you purchase Max Pass and have the ability to make those Fast Pass reservations on your phone, you also get Photo Pass for that day. And it is a daily purchase. So you can choose, like, hey, we're going to do all of our Fast Pass rides this day. And we'll do all of our character meet and greets, too, because that's when we have Photo Pass. Um, Photo Pass at Disneyland? <laughs> not Great. worth it. Not worth it at all. Uh, I really hope if they're charging people $10 a day for this, they better put some more photographers out. Because yeah. it's pretty pathetic. That, that was the thing. Like, it wasn't, like... They didn't have photographers, even with the characters, really. Yeah. So, like, here's a character meet and greet. Oh, we'll take a picture with your phone. Like, what? That is not <laughs> no, what I, I was signed picture. up for. Thank yeah. you. Oh, and by the way, I did a photo book, and the fast pass photos. Um, I was having problems with them showing up as low resolution in the photo book. I'm like, are you serious? Like, they're not even good enough cameras that they show up with the right resolution. My cell phone video, my cell phone photos, I could like do almost a whole 12 by 12 page and I didn't have low resolution problems. So hello uh, to Stacy Wolf. So anyway, that's my <laughs> rant about Disneyland photo pass. Um, but if you don't, um, if you don't pay for max pass, you can still use the app because it will tell you which return times are currently available at the kiosk. So it's still going to be really good for strategizing. Like, okay, let's say I'm standing over by paradise pier and I don't know which fast pass kiosk I want to go to well, which one's going to have the return time that I want? And then, you know, you can, rather than, like, walk over to Radiator Springs Racers, you can be like, oh, well, actually, Toy Story is a better option for me. I'm going to go the other direction. So it's going to improve everybody's strategy, even for the paper fast passes, I think. Um, so even if you're not paying for Max Pass, you're still going to get some benefit out of using it. That's it. That's all I have about that. <laughs> um, so tonight's topic is Alani. Yes. And it's in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the running joke all week because Ben's like, what are we going to talk about for a half hour about Alani? <laughs> Fortunately, there was a lot of news. Yeah, so yeah. No, we oh, actually have a lot of things to talk yeah. about. Uh, hello to Jackie Brindenburg. Okay. Um, so Alani's in Hawaii, and it's on the island of Oahu. So other things that are located on the island of Oahu are Honolulu, Honolulu International Airport, more importantly, and Pearl Harbor. So as far as an island that you want to go and actually spend some resort time at, I think Oahu is a pretty decent choice um, because it's going to give you a lot of the things that Hawaii has to offer um, right there on that same island. Yep. Um, I'm guessing, like we haven't been to Hawaii yet, and we haven't been to Alani, obviously, um, but I'm guessing that you're probably going to find that Oahu is more crowded than the other islands since the major international airport is on its island. Yeah. Um, Anyone who's been to Hawaii or uh, Hawaii, please feel free to chime <laughs> in. We are checking comments. Yeah. Um, in addition to um, to Alani, uh, in fact, I'm just going to mention it first so I don't forget about it. Um, we have a product that we sell at the agency uh, that's a Norwegian cruise. In fact, we sell all of Norwegian, but this particular Norwegian cruise... Uh, is a seven-day round trip from Honolulu. So if you want to see the other islands in Hawaii, um, because just going to Alani obviously isn't going to get you there. It's one resort in one spot at one beach. And yeah, you can take day trips on your same island, but going anywhere else is really kind of not feasible or not realistic. Um, doing the seven-day intra-island cruise will do uh, will get you up to uh, Waikiki, um, <laughs> Where are the other famous places in Hawaii? Maui. Um... You're welcome. <laughs> I meant to look up this itinerary actually before we started. But at any rate, it's a seven night cruise, seven day cruise. And uh, it will take you to the other islands. And it'll give you excursions on those islands just like any other cruise ship would. So, you know, you can do things like um, helicopter ride over a volcano and look in you know, if you're feeling so inclined. Indeed. Um, 
So I definitely recommend if you're if you're thinking about wow, Alani sounds really great. If you have the ability to extend your stay, which coming from the East Coast and flying that whole way to Hawaii, I would really recommend that you try to make it a two week trip. Um, it's a really nice um, opportunity to get kind of the best of both worlds. You know, staying at a resort for a week and actually or or less, um, and um, actually cruising the area and getting to see as much of Hawaii as you can. And like we said earlier. Alani is not a park. Right. It is a. It is a. It is on par with the deluxe resorts at Disney World. But it is so. There's activities. There's stuff to do. And there are character meet and greets, from what I understand. Yeah. We'll but it is not that. a theme park. So if you are going there expecting uh, Disneyland Hawaii, that is not what you're in for. Nope. Um, no, just a resort. Yep. And very nice resort very nice by resort. all appearances, right. and right. would. Um, gladly stay there for like and a they week. have a lot of really good inclusions too that we'll like said we'll, we will get into detail about that in a minute um but the uh it, the region that i brought up the norwegian cruise is because that norwegian is currently the only line that does uh, a round trip cruise from honolulu uh you have other lines that you can take uh, they do one-way pacific cruises uh either usually out of vancouver um or seattle that they'll do a one-way to hawaii and maybe do one or two stops um but Norwegian's the only one that's really going to give you that sampling of uh, of the islands. And it is actually um, one of their highest rated cruises. It's on the Pride of America, uh, which is one of their highest rated ships. So it's definitely um, definitely a good option if you're thinking Hawaii. Uh, now, if you want to keep your vacation very Disney, uh, they're not offering it at the moment. But Disney used to do a Vancouver to, Hol to Honolulu um, cruise. It was a 10-night, um, used to be on board the Wonder. And it was five nights at sea, followed by four stops on, on the islands of Hawaii, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they're not running it right now, and it's not on the schedule for 2018. But if you're thinking long-term and you and you do want to keep your vacation very Disney, um, it's definitely an option that we should check and <laughs> see if it's available for your sailing, sailing time. Okay, so now on to Alani itself. Yes. Um, there are 359 rooms and 481 villas. Um, as we've talked about a little bit on our other resorts, a room is going to get you a more standard accommodation where you have two beds, uh, whereas or a king bed and a fold-out queen. Whereas uh, a villa is going to get you a queen bed and a fold-out in a studio room, but it will get you other amenities like having a microwave in the room. So um, it really just depends on the makeup of your party. Um, somewhat it depends on the ages and activity levels of the people that you're going with whether everybody like i need like a real bed with a real mattress <laughs> or uh, um i can i can hang out on a sofa that'll be fine um just kind of depends on your preference there uh as far as rates on the standard rooms and the standard rooms only sleep four in alani if you have a party of five you do have to upgrade to a suite uh, which then of course increases your cost substantially but there are uh, 16 suites available so if you have a larger party and you don't want to split into two rooms, there are some, some options there. Um, but the standard rooms, depending on the time of year you go, uh, they will run anywhere from $484 a night to $814 a night. Whoa. And that's based on time of year, uh, your Hard least work. expensive times. I, it's going to be, I mean, you're never going to guess this, but your least expensive is January through May, which you can't believe <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. um, November also has a pocket, and December also has a pocket of a couple weeks that are um, that are also on that lower side. Uh, most expensive times to go are um, June, July, August, Thanksgiving, and uh, they they all max out at about eight fourteen, depending on your view. And then Christmas week, um, I, we don't even want to talk about. Uh, don't go <laughs> Christmas week. <laughs> I, and I mean, honestly, traveling Christmas week in general is just. It, you've got to really know what you're in for uh, yeah. because it's your airfare is going to be expensive because of people trying to travel home for the holidays. Your stay is going to be more expensive because it is it is a time that a lot of people, especially with children, try to travel because of not having to miss school. Um, people who don't have to work that week, um, you know, can get a whole week's worth of vacation in. So it is it's definitely you know a big deal as far as doing travel. So um, just be prepared to pay considerably more if you're going that week. And especially with having Christmas and New Year's, it's just yeah. double the fun, double the expense. <laughs> so, um, now, the villas and suites, they can accommodate 4 to 12 people. So you can do an extended family kind of trip. Um, if everybody in the family is able to pitch in, then you might find that doing a suite for 12 people might actually be more cost effective for you than booking just a room for you and your family. So, um, Things that are included with your stay... We're going 
a cheat sheet here a little bit because a lot of these words are in Hawaiian and I don't speak the Hawaiian language very well. So <laughs> just there are pools. Uh, there are pools. <laughs> there are three pools, um, one of which has a zero entry, one of which is an adult only. Um, there is a, a lazy river. Mm. Uh, the tubes are included. There's no no um, extra tube fee. fee. Yeah, there's no tube fee. There's actually quite a bit included as far as resort amenities. Um, there are two water slides um, in the pools, and there's also a whirlpool area. So four there are four whirlpools in the whirlpool area. So lots of uh, water activities that don't involve going out in the Pacific Ocean. Huh. If you do want to go out in the Pacific Ocean, and I think this is pretty nice. The um, beach umbrellas. The um, boogie boards, uh, sandcastle uh, molds, shovels, and beach chairs are all included in your uh, room. So, I mean, you know, when you start thinking about it, we, I mean, yeah, it's $500 to stay. But start nickel and diming what you pay to go to any beach on the East Coast. And, oh, I'm not, we got to rent a chair. Okay, we got to rent two. There's 20 bucks. We're going to rent a boogie board for each of the kids. There's another 20 bucks. We're, you know, you're... If you end up dropping another hundred bucks on amenities every day, then it's really four hundred <laughs> to stay in the room, and you know a hundred dollars on what you would have would have uh, taken down to the beach with you. So, it it just it depends on what your preferences are, yeah. what your choices are, how expensive your vacation really is relative to other choices that you have. It's the same thing with a lot of the resorts in Disney World. Absolutely. You know, there are it, there's a higher price point there, but there are amenities included that can make up some of that difference right. so um yeah so um entertainment um there's an evening uh celebration including hula dancers Ooh. um there is a luau type um type of um oh geez sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week it has it has um There, there's a, a luau experience. Um, I don't recall the name off the top of my head, so and I can't find it at quick glance here. So um, they do a fire pit with storytelling. So similar uh, things like Chippendales Campfire, but with like actual Native Hawaiian storytelling and um, you know actually getting some cultural immersion out of that experience too. Uh, and speaking of cultural immersion, the lodge itself, um, every detail was. Uh, facilitated by <clears throat> the the people of Hawaii so there are uh, you know they had um, expert consultants coming in uh, villagers that, that live you know on Oahu who were able to um, to talk about the history and the culture of Hawaii and weave those elements into the structure of the lodge into the experiences that you and your family have uh, one in particular is Auntie's Beach House um, that's for children um, 2 to 12 I think I'm pretty sure Auntie's is yeah, I think Auntie's is 2 to 12, or 3 to 12. Um, but at any rate, they um, have activities there for the kids that are culturally themed, so that they're getting some sort of experience while you're at the spa. So, And speaking of spa treatments, um, I'm usually not, that's not what I'm going to hit up for, yeah. for entertainment. Um, but the kinds of spa treatments that they have available at Alani, they have some that are just allow you to come into the spa area so that you don't necessarily, you know, you'll, you'll pay a premium for that still, but you don't have to schedule a massage or a facial. You know, you can, you can just be in the spa area and enjoy the, the pools and the waterfalls and the things that they have in there. Um, Alani also has the only um, teenager's spa mm. on the entire chain of Hawaiian islands. So, Excellent. Round all the teenagers yes. <laughs> up so that they can be properly controlled. But if your teen is into spa treatments and really wants something that's geared specifically for them, for their interests and likes, uh, Alani is a really great place to, to get that. Um, Do they have like eye massages for the eye rollers? And uh... <laughs> Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been rolling your eyes a lot lately. you got to calm down on that. <laughs> In, uh, My apologies to all the teenagers out there who do not roll their <laughs> eyes. <teenagers. laughs> uh, there are uh, Ohana movie nights, um, which are included, which of course they would be at any Disney resort. So mm -hmm. you're not really getting anything in particularly special about uh, as far as uh, staying in Ohana over a regular Disney resort there. But they do still have them. Um, they do um, hula and ukulele lessons. They do Hawaiian lei making. 
uh, and do art and nature tours. And all of those are included in the cost of admission. So when I say, you know, the, when we talk about the nightly rates, yes, they're high relative to what we might expect to pay at a Disney resort, but they're not high relative to what you would pay in Hawaii. And they do come with a lot of inclusions. Um, they actually have excursions and tours that go off of the resort. And the, the cast members at Alani uh, encourage people to leave <laughs> because they weren't expecting that every person who was occupying a resort space would stay every day. They were expecting people to want to go to Pearl Harbor or want to go up to the north end of the island. And um, no one's leaving. <laughs> people are getting to Alani and they're like, wow, this is great. Let's stay here. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so, I mean, definitely there's enough to do to entertain yourself there for days. Um, this is not um, a destination that Disney recommends for honeymooners, which sounds kind of counterintuitive because as East Coasters, we think Hawaii, we think exotic, exotic honeymoon destination. Um, Disney doesn't recommend that you do your honeymoon in Alani <laughs> because the, everything there is so family-friendly that you're probably going to feel more overwhelmed by families than you would even on a Disney cruise. Uh, and not to say that the kids are around constantly because they do have things like auntie's beach house where they're going to go and they're going to do something that's specific to their age group for the day. Um, but it is more of a family experience than, than being on a Disney cruise. So if you're thinking, I want to go to Hawaii for my honeymoon, it might not be the place where you want to spend your entire honeymoon. Um, might be fun to do like, you know, two nights, three nights, and then hit the Norwegian cruise and see the rest of Hawaii. Um, as far as uh, family fun that's included, uh, the Disney character meet and greets are available. And I believe, um, oh, the last I looked, you can meet Donald, Chip and Dale, Minnie, Mickey, Goofy, and Moana is currently in Hawaii. Mm. Um, I believe they were bringing Maui to Alani. Maui's going somewhere, and I, I'm I'm, I'm like 99% sure it was Alani. That makes sense. It, may, it does, yeah. yeah. Um, they do also have movie rentals and board games and, you know, other things that might be just fun to chill and veg out and just enjoy some relaxing time. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. There's a fitness center. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they do yoga on the beach, which is kind of cool. So. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, speaking of the beach, Alani does have a private beach area. And the setup is going to, there are two tower type sections. Uh, there are multiple towers within but each one, but they're kind of close together. And then there's the main ceremonial house, kind of Polynesian style. It really reminds you of the Polynesian when you look at the pictures um, in the center. So uh, what I'm guessing in the layout, I believe the villas are on one side and the rooms are on the other side. That's typically how um, Disney lays out their, their vacation club. Oh, yeah, well. So uh, let's see. As far as dining... Oh, yes, this is There's interesting. There's food. There's food. There's always food. <laughs> Were you not interested? They will. They will always. They will always give you no, no. I okay, just, good. But you had me at food. <laughs> food, yeah. yeah. Um, Mahahiki is the uh, bounty of the islands, and that's where you're going to find your Disney character breakfast. Mm. Um, that breakfast features Minnie, Mickey, and Goofy, and uh, in the evening, that's a casual dining, um, casual dining restaurant, and uh, there's a lot of local, locally inspired dishes. Um, at Ma Makahiki. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a whole new language. I'm working on it. Time to a podcast. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, as far as quick service dining, um, anything from uh, poolside to snacks and fountain beverages to shaved ice to yes. yeah. <laughs> um, sandwiches, salads. You know your normal normal grab and go kind of fare. Uh, they have uh, one, two, three, four, five, like six different options for that. Um, bless you. Thank you. Other um, other options there are is the uh, Hawaiian inspired cocktail lounge, and um, off the hook, which is uh, Hawaiian inspired appetizers and favorite drinks, and then the grand dining experience is called ama ama, uh, which maybe means contemporary island cooking. <laughs> <laughs> um, they serve breakfast, brunch, and dinner uh, with traditional Hawaiian specialties overlooking the crystal blue waters and the beach. So Ama Ama is the upscale um, t table service restaurant uh, on the resort. Um, as you can tell, there aren't 
really a, a huge array of options as far as eating on the resort. So that would be another place I would say you might want to consider going off resort, checking out some of the actual local cuisine in addition to the local cuisine that's provided on the resort. So, um, now you mentioned villas. Is this a, a is this a vacation club resort too? It is a vacation club resort. Um, yes. Okay. Well, I just <laughs> I, yeah. Some of our some of our hi Sue. Right. Uh, some of our uh, followers are Disney Vacation Club members. That's what so about. yes, that's true. Um, there are palm trees. There are palm trees. <laughs> oh, entertainment! I wanted to talk about the luau. Sorry, guys. Yes, sorry. Um, Starlet Hui is, is what it's called. The It's a celebration featuring Disney storytelling, Hawaiian music, and performers. So that's going to be your um, luau-type experience. So I knew it was in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, attractions at Koalina, which um, is the uh, resort area in Hawaii. Um, there is a golf club. There's tennis. Uh, beach and Sport Club, and there is round trip shuttle service available to Waikiki. Oh. Uh, also, around uh, the the entire island, you can do a catamaran experience, a ranch experience, Waimea Falls, which is the North Shore experience, including Diamond Head Crater and the USS Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor. Oh. So, um, lots of different excursions so that you can uh, get out of the resort for the day a little bit and um, you know it gives the folks that run Alani a chance to you know spruce up while you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's kind of like it, trying to stay at the resort the whole time is almost like if you went on a cruise and tried to stay in your cabin the whole time your steward would be like get out I have to clean. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see we talked about prices right and we did um, yep. breakfast and yeah. yeah. So Without having actually been there, there's not too much more we can tell you about Alani. Right. And we'll be happy to share more with you when we go. Yes, but... we are planning to go. <laughs> but um, we're about two years and out And wait trip. one second. <laughs> nope, time travel has not been invented between now and when we went to Alani because I have not traveled back in time to tell us about it. So uh, you'll just have to keep tuning in and wait. Um, yeah, so that one's going to be about two years until we have yeah. a review. But here, put, it we in have your, a, put it in your Google Calendar. We have a fine. great offer for you. If you go... We would be happy to invite you on the show, and you can tell us all about it from first-person point of view. Indeed. Okay. So, but we did want to share it with you because um, it's it's definitely a property that, as East Coasters, we often overlook um, because even getting to Disneyland is a big deal for us because you know it's a six-hour flight, and when you're talking to Lonnie, you're talking about twelve hours in the air. Yep. So it's definitely a time commitment to get there. I mean, you're you're going almost to the other side of the world. Um we rec we recommend stopping off in Disneyland to break up your flight a little bit right. and get a little time in right. the uh the original park. And I would say go as direct as possible on the way out and stop in Disneyland on the way back because when you're traveling west, like I find it much easier to reset my clock because it's like we're just getting in and the day is longer than it was going to be which makes it really easy to just stay up go to sleep with the sun and you get up and you're normal um ish um coming home uh, it's just first of all it's it's pretty difficult to come home from the west coast and not use an overnight flight at some point especially if you're coming home all the way from hawaii um the only, really the only way to do it is to take a day in between so if you fly from Hawaii back to LA and then take some time, like take three days at Disneyland, take it slow, <laughs> and then get back on the plane and fly the rest of the way, uh, it, really, it really does break up the, the travel a little bit and make your life a little easier. Um, or, you know what, pair it with an Alaskan cruise, you know, go see Hawaii and Alaska on the same trip. Yeah, that's a, there's an option too. I mean, there are lots of choices. Um, well, they're right to next to your... each other on the maps, right? <laughs> yeah, they're both islands, right? <laughs> 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 uh, so that's that's kind of all I have to say about Alani. Oh, uh, it's in Hawaii. There are palm trees. It's in Hawaii. There are palm trees. <laughs> so um, uh, there is a TV show called Hawaii Five O. Maybe it's related. I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so our plan is actually to go there for Ben's fortieth birthday. That's what he wants to do for, old. for his fortieth birthday trip. So um, that's why 2019 is our our target date. Um, also, Star Wars Land. Yeah, we might catch that on the way home. So. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to see. Uh huh. We'll see. Yeah. Uh huh. If it's open yet, honestly, it might not be open yet. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I doubt we're gonna hear a date this year. <laughs> I, I don't know. So, uh, and that brings us to our fun fact. Wait, before you do oh, your fun fact. No fun fact. No, before you do your okay, fun fact. Okay, before fun fact. What if this were a metal 
that I got for maybe going for a run with the rest of the agency. Say, oh, yeah. next weekend. Oh, geez. Guys, I, I'm supposed to be reminding you about this. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, my brain is not screwed in today. Okay. Um, next Saturday, Counselor Park, 8 a.m. That would be July, <laughs> July 22nd. 22nd. Um, we will be there with the agents to do the second of our Run Disney Shorts series. Um, remember, the theme of the runs this year is Pluto. Um, please feel free to bring your uh, well-trained pet with you to run with us. There is no registration fee to show up and just run or walk and have fun with the agents. Um, we'll yep. have snacks and waters and things like that available uh, if you need them. Um, and you should use them. If you're running, you should hydrate yourself. Do it. Please, please. do. Um, there's no pacing requirement. There's no, it's just two laps around Counselor Park uh, on, the, on the long track. And um, we'll be there to cheer you on and have fun running and walking with you. Um, if you want to register at rundisney.com, I haven't looked lately. I don't know if it's sold out or not. Um, but the you would be registering for the July race. There is also the August race left. Um, and we are running that one on August 12th. So same place, 8 a.m., Counselor Park in York. If you go to our website, themagicsyours.com, that's magics with an S, yours with an S, dot com, um, under the events page, it has um, a map of Counselor Park and tells you where exactly it's at, directions and all that stuff. So yep. um, come on out next Saturday and run or walk with us. Um, it's just, like I said, just a fun event. Like, there's no pressure. It's just get out and enjoy the day, and hopefully it's not sweltering. <laughs> yep. And we do do a quick free plug. If you're looking for us, look for the Top of the Vine uh, wine tour van. Uh, that is, good job. Man. Yep. So yep. that that's a good way to find us if you're out there. Yep. Um, yeah. And, and just real quick, shameless free plug for Jeff. Um, our our uh, agency owner, uh, Jeff, he actually does a wine tour business also. So if you're in need of a van rental uh, with a chauffeur, or um, I believe he has a 15 passenger van. I think so. I think it's 15. Um, there's a lot of seats. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of places to sit. You can call Jeff and he'll tell you. Um, so anyway, he does, uh, does you know takes the van out for wine tours, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties. If you need to get somewhere, I mean concerts, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, but if you need to get somewhere safely and you need a designated driver to make that happen, um, Jeff will hook you up and, um, definitely, uh, more cost effective than running a limo and a lot of fun too. It's not, it's not so stuffy, you know, it's not low. Like you, when it's limo, you gotta get down really low to get into it. And Jeff's a lot of fun. Yeah. And Jeff's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I think it's easier to get in and out of the van than it is to get in and out of the limo. So just personal opinion. That's why um, I don't get her limo rides. <laughs> She's too picky. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's too fancy. <laughs> What's our fun fact? Fun fact. Okay, so um, Nikita Khrushchev visited uh, California um, right around the time. It was right after Disneyland opened. And, of course, this was an international sensation, uh, international phenomenon, and he wanted to go to Disneyland. And everything was arranged, and, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Khrushchev and the children were all set to go to Disneyland, and at the last minute, the security clearances were pulled. And um, there's a, quite a historical episode of um, Nikita Khrushchev throwing a world-class hissy fit <laughs> over not being allowed to go to Disneyland. And his wife was so upset that she refused to go and take the children. Wow. So... It's our fun fact for the day. <laughs> a lot of history tied up with Disneyland. And there not is. just, you know, Walt Disney history, yeah, but there really world is. history. It's really, it's really pretty interesting. Uh, I do want to let everybody know um, next week we're going to be talking about the Disney Fantasy. So that will um, finish our discussion about the large Disney ships, the two large Disney ships. Um, currently, two largest. <laughs> yeah. uh, two larger ones are coming later, soon. Um and then the following week, um, I will be on site in San Francisco doing an Adventures by Disney, and we'll be doing a live show from San Francisco. Um, Which I will not show, be there for. I won't be there, because I'm going with Mom, so she's getting suckered <laughs> into doing a live show. Um, but, um, what was I going to say? I don't know. I ruined your train you, of thought. You pushed the train off Choo -choo. the Choo-choo! <laughs> um, yeah, Mom, Adventures by Disney, show... Oh, that show, that'll be on the 29th, I think, is that Friday? Uh, the 28th is the Friday. 28th is the Friday. We're on the 7th. Um, that's right. That should be the easiest one. Uh, that show may actually go out a little bit late because 8 o'clock here is 5 o'clock in San Francisco. And I know that we're on our own that evening. We don't have um, trip excursions planned. Um, but our show, like, I don't know if we'll be done by 5 o'clock San Francisco time. So if we are, our show will go on at 8 Eastern if we're running a little bit late. 
hang on, we'll be there. So that's All it right. for us for tonight. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you with the Disney Fantasy next week. Good night, folks.